Have you ever wondered where our sun came from? Our cosmic story begins in the quiet depths of space, where dense clouds of gas and dust float serenely. These aren't just any ordinary clouds, they are the birthplaces of stars, the celestial nurseries of the cosmos. Within these stellar nurseries, something extraordinary begins to happen. Gravity, the invisible force that holds our universe together, starts to pull these particles of gas and dust towards one another. As more and more material gets drawn in, the cloud starts to collapse under its own weight, forming a spinning disk. At the heart of this disk, a hot, condensed object begins to take shape. This is the birth of a protostar, the first step in the life of a low-mass star. The protostar, now a spinning ball of gas and dust, continues to contract under gravity. As it shrinks, it heats up, and its core becomes denser. The pressure and temperature rise until they reach a critical point, igniting nuclear reactions. This is the moment when a star is truly born. The nuclear reactions in the core generate energy, pushing against the force of gravity. This delicate balance between gravity pulling in and energy pushing out is what allows a star to shine. Our sun, a perfect example of a low-mass star, was born this way, from a dense cloud of cosmic dust and gas. It's a fascinating process that takes millions of years. Yet, it's happening all around us in every corner of the universe. Each star you see in the night sky has its own story of birth, life, and eventual death. So, a low-mass star much like a cosmic phoenix rises from the ashes of cosmic dust and gas. These celestial objects born from the most basic elements in the universe illuminate our nights, guide our journeys, and provide the energy that fuels life on our planet. And that, my friends, is the birth of a low-mass star. So, we now know where low-mass stars come from, but what happens during their lifetime? Low-mass stars, such as our very own sun, lead fascinating lives. Their story is one of transformation, balance, and endurance, written in the language of nuclear fusion and gravity. The main sequence phase of a low-mass star's life is where the magic, or rather the science, really happens. Inside the star's core, hydrogen atoms are under such immense pressure and temperature that they begin to merge or fuse together. This process, known as nuclear fusion, is the heart of a star's life. It's not just a simple merger though. When hydrogen atoms fuse, they form a helium atom. But here's the catch. The helium atom is slightly lighter than the sum of the two hydrogen atoms that made it. So, where does the missing mass go? It's converted into energy as per Einstein's famous equation ELMC2. This energy radiates outward, providing the star with its shine, and if the star has any planets in its orbit, it provides them with heat and light. Now this might sound like a quick process, but it's anything but. The main sequence phase can last billions of years. Yes, you heard right, billions. During this time a delicate balance is maintained. The outward push of energy from nuclear fusion in the core is perfectly balanced by the inward pull of gravity caused by the star's own mass. This equilibrium is what keeps a star stable during its main sequence phase. But, what happens when the hydrogen in the core runs out? Well, the star doesn't just go dark. Remember, it's a tale of transformation. When the core runs out of hydrogen, fusion slows down. Less energy is produced and gravity starts to win the battle, causing the core to contract. But don't worry, our star isn't done yet. As the core contracts, it heats up the outer layers of the star, igniting hydrogen in a shell around the core. This causes the star to expand and cool, transforming it into a red giant. So the life of a low-mass star is a cosmic dance between gravity and nuclear fusion, a delicate balance that lasts billions of years. It's a tale of transformation from a cloud of gas and dust to a main sequence star, and finally a red giant. After billions of years in the main sequence phase, things start to change dramatically for our low-mass star. But that's a story for the next scene, so stay tuned as we continue our journey through the life and death of low-mass stars. Now, let's talk about the final stages in the life of a low-mass star. Our celestial protagonist, the low-mass star, has spent the majority of its life in a stable phase known as the main sequence, where it has been peacefully fusing hydrogen into helium in its core. But nothing lasts forever, even for stars. Once our star has exhausted its hydrogen fuel, it undergoes a dramatic transformation. As the hydrogen supply dwindles, the core of the star begins to contract under its own immense gravity. This contraction generates heat, causing the surrounding shell of hydrogen to ignite and initiate a process of helium fusion. As the core contracts and heats up, the outer layers of the star start to expand and cool down, turning the star into what we call a red giant. Our once modest low-mass star now becomes a behemoth, 
often expanding to a size that could engulf the inner planets if it were placed at the center of our solar system. This phase, however, is transient. The outer layers of the red giant are not gravitationally bound as tightly as they were during the main sequence phase. Over time, stellar winds and radiation pressure push these layers away from the core. This process, known as mass loss, results in the star shedding its outer layers into space, creating a beautiful glowing shell of gas and dust around the star. This shell is what we refer to as a planetary nebula, a somewhat misleading name as it has nothing to do with planets. The heart of the planetary nebula is what remains of the star's core, now exposed. This core, or white dwarf as it is commonly known, is incredibly hot, often reaching temperatures of hundreds of thousands of degrees. However, it's no longer undergoing nuclear fusion. It's essentially a stellar remnant, left to cool and darken over the course of billions of years. It will eventually become a black dwarf, a celestial phantom, invisible against the blackness of space. Yet, even in death, our low-mass star contributes to the grand cycle of the cosmos. The gas and dust shed by the star during the planetary nebula phase are rich in heavier elements, produced by the star during its lifetime. These materials are recycled back into space, where they can eventually coalesce to form new stars, planets, and maybe even life. And so, after billions of years our low-mass star ends its life not with a bang but with a beautiful cosmic display. The death of a star is not just an end, but the beginning of new celestial stories waiting to unfold. From birth to death, the life of a low-mass star is a cosmic journey of transformation. We've been on a stellar voyage today, observing the birth, life and death of these celestial entities that sprinkle our night sky with their captivating glow. We started our journey with the birth of low-mass stars, born from the dust and gas of interstellar clouds. These stars, smaller than our sun, ignite their nuclear furnaces and begin their long, stable lives on the main sequence. Throughout their lifetime, these low-mass stars burn steadily, fusing hydrogen into helium in their cores. Their lower mass means they have a slower rate of fusion and thus, a longer lifespan, often exceeding billions of years. These celestial bodies are the steady, enduring beacons of the cosmos, but every star, regardless of its mass, eventually exhausts its nuclear fuel. For low-mass stars this leads to a transition into red giants, their outer layers expanding while their cores contract. Eventually they shed their outer layers, creating a planetary nebula and leaving behind a dense, hot core, a white dwarf, to cool over eons. These low-mass stars play a crucial role in the cosmic theater. They contribute to the creation of heavier elements, enriching the interstellar medium for the birth of new stars. Moreover, their stable, long-lasting existence makes them potentially suitable hosts for life-bearing planets. Our exploration of the life and death of low-mass stars shows us the transient yet enduring nature of the cosmos. Each star's journey from a nebulous birth to a radiant death is a testament to the universe's constant state of change and evolution. If you've been intrigued by this cosmic journey we'd love to hear your thoughts. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the ride, leave a comment with your reflections or questions. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more fascinating insights into our universe. Stay curious, dear stargazers.